Hello guys, time for monthly tradition on this channel, tips and tricks about Laravel from Twitter for the last month. It was pretty hard to squeeze this video in the huge amount of topics about Laravel 12 Cloud and all the other things. So that's why this video for tips for February isn't out until almost mid-March. But still in this video as usual 10 to 12 tips in roughly 10 minutes or so. The first tip is a video from Nuno Maduro and I will link that in the description below. It takes a minute to watch but basically in case of this code when you have database transaction and dispatching a job it's beneficial to change one settings in the database driver for the queues change after commit to true to avoid issues watch the full video of Nuno explaining that in more details the next tip comes from Punyapal and it's about trade method conflicts what happens if you use two trades which add some methods and the method name is the same ideally you should not get to that situation but maybe you're using trades from packages for example which are in conflict so you can actually put the aliases with instead of and as with syntax like this I don't remember personally ever doing that or being in that specific situation but apparently there is a solution. The next tip comes from myself on Twitter in one of the latest versions in Laravel 11.42. They released the new feature by Jason McCreary, creator of Laravel Shift, with a lot of methods that shorten the operations with dates. So where past, where future and a lot of kind of sub methods for the same methods. Personally, I'm not a huge fan of such Laravel magic, so to speak, but if you prefer it, you can use it from Laravel 11 and 12 as well. The next tip comes from Laracast and from Newton Job, who works at Laracast now to handle tweet tips. And this is about eloquent resources, which may be used not only for APIs. Look at this example. So there's Stripe payment resource, which is to array, similarly how you would use that in API, but it is used not in API. It is making the array which is passed to another function of Stripe. And also the interesting part I've noticed in the official documentation of Laravel, they are called API resources, but the URL for that is eloquent resources, which doesn't mention API, so you can use it outside of APIs as well. The next tip comes from myself, and this is about PHP. I didn't expect that tweet to get so viral with 800 likes, but basically you have three syntax options for this case. For example, you may or may not have that title variable defined with the value, and then you need to check if it is set and then assign the default value otherwise. So majority of people actually prefer the second option. The third one is too much magic, so to speak. The next tip comes from Laracast and from Newton Job again. And in this case, it's about Laravel 12. So request merge operation in Laravel 12 works differently and gives different result. So here's the zoomed in version of the same image. That request merge is from Laravel 11 and it doesn't include sub keys. It returns that as separate thing. In Laravel 12, it's not the case anymore. If you provide the sub element of the array, it would be merged successfully with two levels. The next tip comes from myself. So I'm mixing Laravel tips and PHP tips. So in this case with PHP, I was reviewing one project and noticed this code with max and min functions. And I realized it was hard for me to understand what is the logic and this if statement is longer but actually more readable. So this is an example of not necessarily and not always you need to shorten the code or use fancy methods if they are provided in the framework or package. Good old if statements, for loops and similar structures are readable since the beginning of time and will be readable forever no matter which tool you use. The next tip comes from Taylor Otwell who announced that in Laravel 12 there is a new feature called assert only invalid. With very simple syntax it will assert that the given fields are the only fields with validation errors. The next tip comes from Punyapal again and this is an interesting syntax which I haven't used myself so I learned that as well. So in authorize method 
of form request, if I understand correctly. You can inject current user and route parameters like this with PHP attributes. Even after learning that, I'm not sure I would actually use that because it doesn't seem really readable to me. But yeah, another example of PHP attributes in Laravel, more and more examples of PHP attributes I see for various use cases, including new starter kits in Laravel 12. So you may adopt that logic if you want as well. The final two tips are actually links to external resources. On Twitter, they announced that Laracon EU All Talks are available on YouTube. So you can go to Laracon EU YouTube channel and watch Taylor's keynote just Archer speaking about Nightwatch and other presentations. And finally, my own tweet announcing the premium tutorial about Laravel security, but three of those tips are free without any membership. So if we open this post, the first tip is don't use request all like this. Always validate the data and use either request only or request validated. Otherwise, someone would be able to inject the data and you may not like that. The second tip is, of course, for raw SQL queries, bind the parameters with question marks and don't do anything like this because you will have SQL injection problem. And then the third tip is do not leave app debug true in production because otherwise people would see your errors, including the internal server data for Laravel and you do not want to expose that. I will link the full article with all the other tips in the description below as well. So yeah, these are the tips for February now published in March. Which ones were new to you? Which tips will you actually adopt in your projects? Let's discuss in the comments below. That's it for this time and see you guys in other videos.